Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I will review the various early synapsid reptiles from the Pennsylvanian and Permian periods. The synapsid condition is where the skull ex exhibits a single temporal fenestra or opening in the side of the skull. The synapsid condition is found in later mammals, and it is within this lineage of early amniotes that our own lineage evolved from. The synapsids were also the most diverse and advanced of the reptiles living during the Permian period, and it was not until the end Permian extinctions that synapsids, although survivors of the extinction event, were much reduced throughout the later Mesozoic era. As after the major extinction at the end of the Permian, the dinosaurs became the dominant group of terrestrial vertebrates. These synapsids, because of their relationship to modern mammals, are often called mammal-like reptiles or reptile-like mammals, since they likely resembled modern lizards more than a furry rat. Some groups of Permian synapsids uh, get confused with dinosaurs since many were carnivores and rather large in size. Basal synapsids are often referred to as pelicosaurs. A paraphyletic group of basal synapsids which are united by primitive features of the skull and skeleton, and many of which had sailbacks. The earliest synapsids appear during the late Pennsylvanian and early Permian periods in North America, including the early family Eothyridae. The early fossil Eothyrus features a single temporal fenestra between the jugal, squamosal, and postorbital bones in the skull. The teeth are long sharp and jagged, suggesting a carnivore diet of insects and other smaller tetrapods. Now the bones in the skull, other than the single opening on the side of the skull, compare with the earliest amniote, Paleothyrus, including having a temporal, a postparietal, a pre- and postfrontals, temporal and supertemporal bones, as well as a large pineal opening on the top of the skull. Another early Permian synapsid fossil is Odiolops, which is known from the Cutler Formation. It features a large temporal fenestra, but retains a very primitive looking skull. The next family of early synapsids are the Caesidae a group of Permian synapsid reptiles known from Texas, Oklahoma, and Europe. The most amazing thing about the Caesidae are their tiny little heads compared to their massive big bodies, which feature large round bellies. They were rather large, stout animals with peg-like teeth and large nasal openings. They are believed to be herbivores, which use their massive bellies to house a digestive tract that was tough enough to digest cellulose uh, found in wood and tough leaves. Um, easy to digest fruits had yet to evolve during the Permian. The next group are the Varanornopsidae, which lived during the early and middle Permian period. They are found in North America, Russia, and in South America, and feature narrower skulls and numerous sharp teeth. The next group are the Ophiocodontidae, a group that extends from the Pennsylvanian and early Permian periods of North America and Europe, although most of their record comes from the color group in the American Southwest. Ophiocodon is the most primitive of the pelicosaurs, as it has a large, broad snout composed of the lacrimal, maxilla, and nasal bones, with the orbit positioned in the back of the skull with a rather small temporal fenestra. 
Now, the lower jaw is slender and broadly bent back to form a wide mouth. Now, this style of skull is found in the later sailback pelicosaurs. The Daphosauridae are a group of bizarre sailback pelicosaurs, which are herbivores with peg-like teeth. They have greatly expanded their neural arches to have these extremely elongated spines along their back, which have bony protuberances along their length. The heads of Edaphosaurids are rather small, with a notch along the ventral side of the squamosal and jugal bones, and feature peg-like teeth for cropping vegetation. Now, the purpose of these large sails and cross pegs along the neural arches is, is unknown, but may have been used for sexual display. The Sphenonacodontidae are a group of sailback synapsids that are carnivores, and they feature the famous Dimetrodon, one of the largest predators of the early Permian, and a common fossil in West Texas. These large predators featured large broad skulls and large sail backs and moved around on rather squat looking bodies with bowed limbs. The large heads equipped with large pointed teeth likely allowed Dimetrodon to attack and eat larger prey, perhaps the numerous smaller tetrapods living at the time. The jaw muscles of Dimetrodon include large adductor muscles that attach near the temporal fenestra, as well as large pterygodeus muscles that attach to the angular bone, creating a muscle sling for closing the jaw and moving the jaw back and forth in a sawing motion. The large sails are a unique uh, puzzle as to their function. The two most cited theories as to the purpose of these large sailbacks are for thermal regulation in giving the animal a surface to warm and cool their body temperature. The other theory is that it served as in sexual selection or to attract mates. Having a large sail would attract the opposite sex, and hence the fittest individuals would produce large sails because they were seen as attractive and desirable for mating and would produce more offspring. Some sails have been found with broken spines, indicating that some of these sailback synapsids engaged in combat with each other, possibly for mates. The next group of Permian synapsids is a large monophyletic group called the Therapsidae, which include a number of more advanced features, including large paired canine teeth. These are the teeth that are distinct from other teeth in the tooth row. Large canines would be something uh, we will see repeated in the evolution of mammals. You can check out this video here if you'd like to learn more about large canine teeth and the evolution of fangs throughout later mammals. The Therapsidae also lost the supertemporal bone in the skull. They exhibit a notch in the angular bone in the lower jaw, and they reduce the number of palatine teeth, with most teeth confined to the maxilla, premaxilla, and dentary. They also have a more upright position, and the skull features a new bone called the septomaxilla, that can be found near the nostril. I have a whole video here on the septomaxilla bone that you can check out if you're interested in learning more. So the theriapsids are a more advanced group of synapsids with the most basal group called the uh, Bermosuchia, with fossils like Bermosuchus and Ganiosuchus, which 
have large canines. And these like, look like scary vampire-like teeth. The Bermasuchia also includes tetraceratops. Now, not to be confused with triceratops, which is a, a dinosaur. Tetraceratops features four bony knobs on the skull and long, sharp teeth and a wide temporal fenestra. The tiny septomaxilla bone is found in the nostril and it's prominent. The next group of Therapsidae are the bowling ball headed animals called Dinocephala or the terrible heads. <laughs> These beasts feature fully ossified thick skulls that resemble bowling balls with massively thick parietal and frontal bones. One of the most iconic dinocephalins is Monchops from the Permian of Russia. These large creatures have thick skulls and bulky robu robust bodies. Their peg-like teeth indicate that they were harmless herbivores. But what were they doing with these thick skulls? Now there's some evidence that Monchops may have used their heads for head budding in a way to attract mates, indicating a complex social structure for these really unusual animals. The dinocephalon are most common in the Permian of Russia, but later members are found in South America and South Africa, suggesting that there was some faunal migration uh, across Pangaea during the later Permian as northern groups interacted with southern groups through passageways across the mountains. However, the dinocephalon never made it into the Permian Basin of Texas. The next group of Therapsidae are a common fossil group from the Permian and into the Triassic, the Dicynodontidae, or two dog teeth. They are also referred to as the uh, larger Amiodonte clade, but the Dicynodonts are the most common of the synapsid reptiles, particularly in the later half of the Permian and hundreds of fossils are known in South America and South Africa. The skulls are really unique in having large canine teeth, as well as a beak-like structure for nipping vegetation. The post-canine teeth are minimal, with the jaw likely used like uh, modern turtles in cropping and swallowing. Nevertheless, the jaw muscles are very well developed for closing the jaw. The jaw featured large external adductors, a levator angularis oris, a master-like muscle on the cheek, large medial external adductors, a temporalis-like muscle, and a large pterygodeus muscle, as well as the depressor mandibulae for opening the jaw. These were big muscles, indicating a very strong bite for these animals. The Dicynodonts were a very successful group during the late Permian. And at the boundary with the Triassic, they suffered a major extinction with three genera extending into the early Triassic, including Kenyamiria, Combustia, and Lystiosaurus. There was, however, another group that did survive better during the major extinction at the end of the Permian, the Therodonta. There are three groups of the Therodontida. The first are the swiftest predator yet to walk the earth, the Gorgiopsida. The Gorgiopsida are known from Russia, South Africa, and China with the best record from South Africa. The large tiger-like Lycaniops like features paired, massively big canines and sharp incisor-like teeth. The eyes were moved to face forward, allowing stereoscopic vision that would aid in judging distances. The brain, while small, was expanded from the earlier groups, but it was in the limbs 
that are the most remarkable as both the shoulder and pelvic girdles are slender and more integrated with the, an upright stance. This was a swift hunter. The Therocephala, the second group of Therodonta, were nimble, tiny insectivore synapsids, which feature a wide temporal fenestra and a secondary palate. Now, a secondary palate is a necessary mammal trait used to close off the roof of the mouth during suckling, which may indicate that milk production extends all the way back into the Permian. Now, there are some suggestions that these animals were covered in whisker-like hairs that help them sense the walls and burrows that they dug, and some reconstructions have them being fully furred. There are two other interesting features that place the Theracephala a step or two closer to true mammals. First is that they have a double occipital condyle, a feature found only in mammals. The second is that the temporal fenestra has expanded to include the orbits. Now this single side opening into the skull is found in many mammals, and only a few later mammals do we see the secondary development of a postorbital bar again. Now the last group of Permian synapsids are the most advanced, the Cynodonte, or the dog tooth synapsids. They feature large canines, forward-oriented eyes, narrow snouts, and a reduced lacrimal bone. The large flared jugal bones allowed a large set of adductor muscles for closing the jaw. The skeleton was very upright with the first operator foramen, a, a feature even humans have. The synodonts are the group that would give rise to true mammals after the massive extinction that would happen at the end of the Permian. A few groups of synodonts would survive, and their survival would ensure that mammals would hang on into the Mesozoic air. In the next video, we will examine the major extinction event that ended the Paleozoic air at the end of the Permian period and ushered in the age of reptiles, the Mesozoic air. All right, for now, be sure to review the major groups of synapsid reptiles. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the description below.